the thing to come out of this, which is the main thing that's been driving social media crazy over the last couple of hours, especially on United Twitter, has been Ronaldo's interview with Piers Morgan. Yeah, you heard that right. Ronaldo sat down with Piers Morgan for a tell-all interview where he basically um, trashed the club, trashed the manager, um, and just basically went in on us overall. And it's really divided the fan base for the most part. It's really, really, really been a divisive interview. For me, just like without kind of going into the quotes and just kind of talking about it overall, I am somebody that can sit in the middle and see both sides. I can see from Ronaldo's side of things how he could walk into a club like United and think to himself, this club has no position given their recent lack of success and given who's currently playing at the club and given their current standing, they're in no position whatsoever to bench me given what I've achieved in the game. If you're just looking at it from a purely selfish Ronaldo is the only thing that matters in the world kind of view. But I could also understand it from the point of view of the club wanting to extract as much value as they want, as they can out of a player like Ronaldo. Because if you're going to sign someone like Ronaldo on those inflated wages, you have to make sure that you can extract as much value as you can from him as a brand, as an entity, as a commodity. I know it's taking away his humanity, but that's how you can look at it as a club. As a manager, when he comes into Eric Ten Hag, you're in a bit of a weird position. Ronaldo's probably well, more well known than you are. He obviously is somebody that's probably won more than you have as a coach. I definitely think he has. And he's clearly somebody you have to handle differently when it comes to player power and when it comes to having a grip on the tr dressing room. Because you hear that a lot with managers and coaches. They always say, if you lose a grip on the dressing room, it's basically over before you started. You have to make sure everyone knows who's in charge. But you also don't want to upset a player like Ronaldo because you could use his leadership, use his influence um, to actually help and aid you in terms of getting that dressing room on side. So I can see both all sides. And also just in terms of a player point of view, if you're Eric Ten Hag and you play football a certain way, you might look at Ronaldo and think he doesn't suit the style of football that I like to play, but I can utilize him here and there when needs be. But obviously a player like Ronaldo doesn't necessarily take kindly to being played as um, a sort of backup player or utilised here and there. He wants to play every single match, all game, um, regardless. It doesn't matter if he's hopping on one leg, if he has one leg, he wants to play every single minute of every single game. And if he doesn't, he's going to throw his toys out of the prime or he's going to storm out and go home as he's previously done. So I get every side of it. And then the other side of the thing also, I think to keep this interview in some level of understanding is that I feel like this interview was filmed a while ago, mostly because of his hair. I feel like he's got way more hair now. So I feel like maybe this interview was filmed prior to what happened at the Spurs game where he decided to walk off the pitch. I think that was prior to that because if this happened after that Spurs game, that's when Ronaldo looks insane because after the Spurs game where he walked off the pitch because he didn't, he wasn't coming on soon enough or he felt like he was being disrespected or whatever it may be and then obviously United ended up finding him, he ended up apologizing to the club, he ended up being out of the team I think for two weeks and kind of got fined in that way and then everyone kind of moved on. It felt like, and he obviously apologized, it felt like we were back to some level of harmony things were kind of back to some level of normality so i don't think he filmed this after when that happened i don't think he filmed whenever he said sorry i think this happened way before that whole storming of the pitch thing in my opinion but obviously the drop of it before the world cup is expertly done by Piers Morgan and maybe Ronaldo's camp because he's not going to be at the club anymore, most likely, especially with the players going to the World Cup now and he hasn't played the last two previous games. So this was the perfect time, if ever, to drop an interview like this. So that's basically my opinion. So I see all sides. If, it, if I was a club, of course, you have to, you know, and you weren't aware of the interview, which I doubt very much, then you have to let him go, just in terms of an authority thing. If you're Eric Ten Hag, you can't have a player openly saying they don't respect you because that's not going to work. Um, and... Uh, if you're one of his teammates, you're also going to be d d disappointed also because you felt like you were over it. You felt like the worst of it has kind of gone past. And now there is some level of kind of cohesion, um, unity and togetherness at the club. Now, don't get me wrong, the Glazers are still the main problem. Um, it would feel it, it would make a, it would make sense why players would be a little bit annoyed that he's kind of, you know, this distracting from the great away win at Fulham, um, distracting from all the good work that's been done on the football side of things with the coaches and the manager and whatnot. That I completely understand. But for me, 
being an ardent glazer out person and being somebody who truly believes in his soul unless we get the glazers out we are never ever going to become a successful club we're never going to win the champions league we're never going to win the premier league which are two of the main trophies that i think most united fans would want i think the other fa cup and league cup can happen they're cup competitions but i think competitions like the champions league and the premier league don't get run by clubs that run the way we are it just doesn't happen we're just too disjointed too much of a joke for that to happen so until we get rid of the glazers until the Glazers sell the, the United and give it to some new owners who actually care about winning trophies, who care about glory, who care about, you know, um, restarting and reflipping, igniting this dynasty, we're never going to be successful. So Ronaldo's interview, if it's going to do anything, it's going to disrupt and it's going to embarrass the Glazers and the owners and the operators in terms of the border and what they do. And for me, that's a job well done. As a player, he can he can come and go. I'm not really that, that bothered about him in general. If he was able to be a good squad player and help us when we needed help, that would be great. But clearly, Ronaldo only cares about himself and only wants to play every game. So if that's not going to play United, let him go somewhere else. But if this means this is one of the many things in the in the kind of dominoes falling of the Glazers' ownership ending, then I'm all for it. I'm legitimately all for it. I don't care who gets buried. I don't care who gets attacked, whether it's the manager, the players, the staff in the flipping kitchen. Bury them all if that means the Glazers will eventually end up selling because of the embarrassment that this um, interview is causing them and obviously how it's going to maybe affect the stock prices or the share prices. I'm definitely for it. I don't care. I'm definitely for it. So let's read some of the excerpts. It says, um, people should listen to the truth. I feel like I've, I feel like I was betrayed. I feel like some people didn't want me here, not just this year, but the past years. Cristiano on, on Rooney. Cristiano says, I don't know why he criticizes me so much. Probably because he's finished his career and I'm still playing at the top level. The Rooney thing and a lot of things make sense. There may be some passer there from training that we don't really know about. That's kind of a behind the scenes locker room kind of talk. And I think Ronaldo's or Rooney's criticism of Ronaldo, don't get me wrong, was a bit weird, but he's just a media pundit person. I don't necessarily think it's that big of a deal, to be honest, but he's allowed to have a, a, a chip back for what Rooney said to him. So I don't really have a problem with that. The comments on Eric Ten Hag, Ronaldo says, I don't have any respect for him because he, does, he doesn't show any respect for me. If you don't have respect for me, I will never have any for you. And I repeat, I don't have any respect for him because he doesn't show respect for me. If you don't have any respect for me, I will never have any respect for you. Which is a crazy thing to say about your manager, especially somebody who, for the most part, in public, we've never heard him disparage Ronaldo. Now, don't get me wrong, Eric Ten Hag doesn't strike me as a manager or as a coach who will ever come out publicly and say anything about any player at the moment we got Mourinho basically has excommunicated a Roma defender I think his name is like Karsdorp or something because allegedly the accusation is that this player was on his mobile phone on the bench and you know most coaches most managers don't let you do that you're not even allowed to bring out your phone on the pitch you're meant to leave it in the locker room so the fact that he was on his phone sitting on the bench is completely out of order and then I guess after the fact his attitude wasn't right he maybe made a mistake in the game he wasn't concentrating whatever it may be Ronaldo deemed him to be the worst and basically chewed him out in front of all the flipping players and said he's never going to play for him ever again blah 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 and then in a press conference he said without naming him there's one player in this team who isn't pulling his weight and is clearly a bad influence and is somebody who I've already told to find a new club in January. So Ronaldo, so Romarino would chew you out in, in, in private, but you also give the press a sanitized kind of like PG version of what he said to you in the change room. But but Ayrton Hart doesn't strike me as that person at all. He would just keep everything in the change room. So I think if he had a problem with Ronaldo, he just wouldn't speak about him. But the fact that he does speak about him and he's so glowingly in his praise and saying that he's going to be a player that I want to use in my squad. But he always mentioned he's part of the group. He doesn't mention that he's like the main guy. I want him to be a part of the group. I want him to contribute, blah, blah, blah. I don't think there is an issue on his side of things. I just think it's just a thing of he doesn't rate Ronaldo or doesn't think he's going to contribute as much footballing wise as much as Ronaldo thinks he's going to contribute. That's where the where it comes to. And maybe there might be some instances I'd imagine where, you know, Ayrton Hag being a somewhat of a novice manager may feel a little bit awkward coming up to Ronaldo and telling him he's not playing or whatever. Just some communication things might go on. You know, him being Dutch and I think he's like Dutch on the 
on the border, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Ericsson Hall got Dutch on the border of Germany or something? So he's got the proper mix of like that sternness and matter of factness, right? There is no um, niceties or pleasantries in his language. He says what he says and he means what he says. So I can imagine communication wise with Renault's ego, them not being that cool and not that friendly. I can get it, but I don't think it's anything sinister from um, Ericsson Hall's point of view or something to be like, oh, I'm not respectful of you. I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. Another one on Ralph Ragnick, our previous interim coach, who was meant to be the football director or something along those kind of lines. And then, you know, the Glazers, as they always do, they pulled the rug underneath from our feet as United fans and promptly fired him when he started to talk too much in the press. And guess who else said something about Ralph Ragnick in the press? Rio Ferdinand, that absolute shill for the Glazers, came out and told Ralph Ragnick to never talk about, no, he told him he should keep all United business behind the scenes and not talk about it in public and all this nonsense. And then Ralph Ragnick obviously eventually ended up getting fired. But I think my opinion on Ralph is that the club set him up to fail. They'd never really laid out what his responsibilities are, what he was made, meant to do in terms of after his interim role. He was never really given any real authority to really change things for the better. And then I think because of that lack of, um, that lack of, what would you call it? that lack of authority that was placed in him by the owners, I think it's see through to the players and everyone else around the club who smelled that he was a dead man walking, basically. Um, anyway, Ronaldo and Ragnick, if you're not even a manager, how are you going to be the boss of Man United? I've never even heard of him. And clearly, Ronaldo and Ragnick had their issues also. So that makes complete sense. I'm not that bothered on that one. Another one says, since Ags since Ferguson left, I've seen no evolution of the club. Nothing has changed. And this is a very damning and important statement to put out there because I feel like for the longest time, I've always said that I feel like we have some of the most embarrassing and maybe, yeah, we have definitely the most embarrassing group of ex-pros that's ever existed, especially in top fight football. Considering how perilous we are in a position in terms of ownership and the fact that we haven't been successful for a very, very long time and the fact that all these other clubs around us in the league are pulling away from us. The likes of Newcastle have got new investors in and they're looking like they've got their act together. They look like they've got a good squad there. They've got a decent manager and they're doing things in a slow and calculated way and they're taking their time and they're showing signs that they could also become a force in the Premier League. I feel like it's imperative and it's flipping vital that people speak out more about how horrible the Glazers are and how terribly run we are as a club and the fact that they have basically left us in a state of disrepute they've literally um you know to, they've literally kind of purposely it feels like in some respects taken their foot off the pedal and left us in the place where whoever does end up buying us has a real job on their hands turning us around so much damage has been done over the years and for me Personal, just looking at it for just a point, you know, a normal guy's point of view, the Glazers have no incentive to sell, especially if they're, you know, withdrawing dividends from the club all the time. And we essentially are never going to get relegated, right, for the most part. The lowest we're going to probably finish is maybe a tenth in some season. But we're pretty much solidified in that regard. And we've got the clout and the history of our badge to help us get certain players over the line. We can offer them high wages. All this stuff can happen. So they've essentially got an investment that's never, ever going to not yield any sort of results or any sort of monetary um, gain for them. I understand. Cool. No problem. But the only way we're going to get them out of the club, to force them out of the club, is if there's pressure being put on them with protests with walkouts and by ex-pros speaking out publicly because that's going to affect guess what the share price but they don't want to do that because these ex-pros are all in the pockets of the glazers because they get boxes they get box seats to sit there um they might get cars to take them to the ground they get access to talk to certain players in terms of interviews they've got their media company Rio Ferdinand being a good example Gary Neville being a good example he works for Sky but even though he said some disparaging stuff about glazers but still in general there is a real lack of players, ex-pros, um, you know, sometimes even senior members of the team who are willing to come out and say anything critical about the owners. It doesn't, I know it doesn't make sense for senior members of the team, I get it, but the ex-pros who we used to play for, especially the ones who were with us when we were successful under Sir Alex Ferguson, they should be the ones who are really kind of trying to sign the alarm, like what's going on with this great club that I once played for, but they don't do it. So the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo is doing it, 
I know he's only doing it in a very selfish way because this is only to benefit him. This is similar to the Kanye West stuff where he talks and talks about, you know, ownership and about, you know, black people not being slaves and all this kind of stuff and questioning the narrative and asking or whatever and not being silenced. But it's not because he wants to advance humanity or he wants to basically propel black voices forward. It's because he wants whatever he wants. It's a selfish thing. Same with Cristiano Ronaldo. But I think if this selfish act ends up benefiting us as a club, I'm for it. He said, Christian Ronaldo, the fans should know the truth. I want the best for the club. This is why I came to Man United. But you have some things inside the club that don't help reach the top level as City, Liverpool and even now Arsenal. He, Silas Ferguson, knows better than anybody that the club is not on the path that they deserve to be. He knows. Everyone knows. The club who don't see that is because they don't want to see it. They are blind. He's calling the owners of the club blind. Mama Mia. So... Obviously, if you're a proper football club, you can't have anybody putting your name into disrepute, right? This is basically grounds for immediate termination in some respects. But because Ronaldo is who he is, football contracts being what they are, the money he makes for the club, the fact that the Glazers are, you know, inadequate in terms of what they're doing as a job, that he probably will end up staying. It wouldn't surprise me if after the World Cup he ends up staying. Don't be surprised in that happening whatsoever. Um, but these are really damning statements but also it's refreshing to hear because we all thought the same thing we all feel the same thing we all feel the same thing we all know it's true it continues here i love my united i love the fans they're always on my side but if they want to do it different they have to change many many things i love the fact that they're always on my side yeah they have made probably to a fault we've got you got stands in it ah, i love that he's quoting picasso so that's hilarious he says, as picasso said you have to destroy it to rebuild it and if they start with me for me it's not a problem so he's clearly trying to be this is Ronaldo's this is what it's how you know he's a pure narcissist because he's trying in his way in his own way to be somewhat humble and have a level of humility by basically saying, Hey, if I'm the sacrificial lamb, if I'm the person they need to start the rebuild from and they finally now because it's kind of like a backhanded compliment, a backhanded it's kind of like a backhanded compliment in a way because he's essentially saying oh they finally woken up with me now i'm the big problem i'm the big bad um distractor and the bad disruptor of the club or whatnot when they've got these other issues that existed before i came but if i have to be the sacrificial lamb i'll take it if that means united being good again which is hilarious because you know you know it's all he's full of shit he continues when really i'm not going to say that i'm looking better than him which is true which is hilarious i'm sure there's most more to it in a quote but that's flipping hilarious i'm sure Rooney will take it well though he seems to be somebody that kind of can laugh at himself okay so i don't think he's gonna take this too seriously um because i think he's the first person to say that he's you know he definitely not he definitely doesn't look in his best shape um another one says a club of this size should be at the top but this is not the case there is no excuses i agree with him on there it says, yeah, fans for me are everything. This is why I give this interview because I think it's the right time to speak my mind. No, he's giving this interview because he wants to leave the club. That's why he's giving the interview. He doesn't want to stay at a club like United. That Because that's the thing. Let's put ourselves in Ronaldo's shoes. He thinks he's better than a club. We may not think he's good. We may think he's you know his legs are gone we may think father time has caught up with him we may think he's not the player he once was but Ronaldo thinks he is so that's fine that's what he thinks in his head so if he's walking into that club and seeing Martial who's constantly injured seeing Rashford who's not a striker there and then seeing himself and then seeing he's on the bench I understand why he's pissed I get it especially for a club like United like how can you not play me given how crap you guys are I understand it but considering we've got a new coach who has a new fresh outlook on how he wants the team to be lined up and what how he wants to attack how he wants to build if he deems him to be surplus to requirements i'm inclined to trust the coach because from the evidence i've seen so far he seems to have a kind of a clue on what he's doing and if we need to go somewhere we need to basically get behind the coach of the club as opposed to the individual players but the issue at hand that makes it a bit tricky with really United is that we're owned by such inept people who have done such damage to our club for so long and they, they seem to be um, they seem to care, they seem to not care at all about the damage they inflict, about how much hurt they cause by how terribly they run the club. And they seem to not listen to us either. It's sometimes a good thing when you hear people say what they're saying, even if it means it's going to maybe, um, you know, it's maybe going to make things worse at the club or in terms of the harmony. It's going to affect how we play. It might be affecting our final position. I mean, as a fan, it's a weird position to be in because at one point you want the players to speak out, but then you also don't want them to fuck up the harmony in the dressing room. And he's definitely going to fuck up the harmony, just especially if he stays. Rado says, so Alex Ferguson said to me, it's impossible for you to come to Manchester City. And I said, okay, boss. There are some people on United Twitter who are like, 
I can't believe he would even say that or basically admit that he was considering going to Man City. And, you know, the rumours were true of what we heard, that he was going to Man City and then last minute dot com or the flipping Glazer Acolytes, the Rogue, the, not Rogue, the Rio Ferdinands, the Gary Nevilles, um, maybe the Roy Keynes, Circus Ferguson, they put a call in and they told him not to go to City and to come to United. But if we're being objective again, he should have probably gone to City. City is a made-up team in terms of the profile, in terms of the setup, in terms of the manager, in terms of what they're doing. It's made for him. He could have gone there, slotted in, become a backup for Haaland or maybe played alongside Haaland. Or maybe they wouldn't have signed Haaland now. Maybe they would have waited until summer to sign Haaland. Regardless, he would have went there and scored tappings and easily got himself into double figures by now. Easily with league goals. So he probably should have selfishly went to Man City. As a fan, would I have been disappointed? Of course, because I love Ronaldo. He's a legend of the club. But as a player that's 37 years old, coming to a club like United at the level that we're at, considering how far back we are and how long we have to go on our journey, it just doesn't make any sense. He probably did set himself up for failure. So it's probably his own fault he didn't do the due diligence enough to look at where we were as a club, where we were as a team, where we were as a flipping, you know, organization to figure out if we we're the best place to go. But then he chose his heart over his head, and this is where you're at. Sometimes you make decisions in life, you deliver them, and it is what it is. Cristiano says, nothing has changed since I left. The pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym, even some technology, even the chefs who I appreciate, lovely people. I thought they would see some technology, some infrastructure. I saw things I saw when i was 20 21 23 which is true because just look at the just look at the the minutia of this point because if you think about it sports te sports technology sports education um it, it evolves all the time there's always few new things happening from tactics to nutrition to fitness to health so it must be surprising to him for considering that he's been at these big clubs that he's been at you know the romages the juventus of this like and maybe every season, maybe every six months, there's somebody new coming in to help out the, I don't know, with the flipping menus and the flipping staff kitchen, whatever it may be, the player's kitchen. There's somebody helping out um, every six months that comes in and says, maybe jacuzzis are good. Someone else comes in, jacuzzis are bad. Someone else comes and says, cold baths are good. Um, cold baths are bad. Like There's always some development and evolution and questioning of the narrative, of the norm that happens in football to give yourself what? That extra inch. Because that extra inch... Um, is, is maybe things that are going to separate you from being, you know, knocked out in the group stages to maybe getting through the not getting through to the knockout stages. Those fine margins, and they could be anything in the organizational side of football. So, if you're Ronaldo and you come back to a club like United and you're seeing legitimately the same facilities, number one, and the same people manning those facilities, facilities, sorry, it could be quite disorientating. Like, what the hell is going on here? Like, are you guys serious about actually being a big club, or is this some some joke jobs for the boys thing? And obviously, we know it's probably the latter. I continue. Ronaldo uh, no. um, says, Ronaldo accuses a lack of empathy, especially when his three-month-old daughter was hospitalized in July. He did not return on time for preseason because he wanted to stay with her. Ronaldo says, senior executives at United even doubted him when, they explained, when he explained why he couldn't return, which made him feel hurt and bad. So... This, I agree, if, if it did happen, this is something that I can agree with would kind of irk you, especially if you already don't rate the club. You already think the club is run like a joke thing and then they're trying to rush you to come to pre-season because, not because they want you to play and get fit and help the club, they're rushing you to pre-season in Southeast Asia because they want to extract the value out of you because they know you're the big draw. They know all the, all the fans there, from all the main United fans in Southeast Asia want to see Ronaldo. They want to get pictures. They want to get stuff signed. You're going to do appearances on local television. Like All this stuff, it's a lot of money generated from Ronaldo appearing at your pre-season. So clearly that was a big issue. But given what happened to Ronaldo's because um, I think this is the daughter, this is the baby that's that was a twin. Given what happened to the other the, the other twin who unfortunately passed away really premature, it's you'd be inclined to believe him. I know some people wouldn't want to believe him because maybe he you know he was already angling for a move away at that time. Who knows? But I think that's pretty abhorrent if true. You should be inclined to believe um, a player like that who already went through something quite traumatic with another one of their babies and they're going through something like this. You should give them as much space and time as possible, especially if you want to get something like that on your side also. It just doesn't make any sort of sense. So that is clearly something that I could believe that could happen. I could believe it. But I could also understand if some people feel like Ronaldo's using that whole thing as an option, as a as a reason to weaponize. So yeah, using that okay, that kind of interest or that kind of stuff around his kids, 
weaponizing it so you can basically get out of the club because that's that's pretty egregious if that happened. Do you know what I mean? Most people would understand if you decided to just like throw toys out the prime and refuse to play. Cristiano said he wants to focus on the World Cup and win it for Portugal and then come back and resolve things to United one win. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're coming back, bro, but I can you know what I can see him coming back. He said that Cristiano and Anfield support after the loss of his child. He said I didn't expect to see this. Cristiano was disillusioned with, to find that Man United could no longer sign World Cup's best players, making their chance of winning top trophies much harder. Force on the universe. So yeah. So clearly Ronaldo is not happy with the structure of the club. I personally feel like it's a good thing if it means the Glazers end up selling. I don't necessarily care because I honestly think the damage the Glazers have done will be will be flipping analyzed, document or will be analyzed and talked about for decades and decades to come. Honestly, I don't think we actually have a full understanding and a scope of just how much damage they've inflicted on this club, let alone the fan base, let alone how we perceived in the around the world in football, let alone all the plays we've missed. Like, there's so much stuff that's gone on around them that it's probably going to be crazy and jaw dropping when we finally get the details of what actually used to go on behind the scenes. And the fact that we have legends in our club that know this and keep quiet because they, they want to make sure they get their prawn sandwich, I have no respect for them. So, the Gary Neville's, the Rio Ferdinand's, the Roy Kings of this world who run interference for the flipping owners I hate you hate them all hate them all with a passion so if Ronaldo's self um self-absorbed delusional um entitled point of view leads to the Glazers leaving he's done the greatest work if on his way out he decided to put the two fingers up and they leave bueno I'm a good fan of it the one thing that's interesting about this interview though just to end is that he is a consummate narcissist though isn't it Ronaldo not once in that whole entire interview, from what we've seen so far in that one little section, has he acknowledged that he's not the player he once was. Which is crazy. Because, in my opinion, I still think, despite his numbers of goals he scored at Real Madrid, and despite how he single-handedly pulled Juventus kicking and screaming to flipping Scudettos and stuff, I still think Ronaldo's best, the best version of Ronaldo was at United. That Ronaldo that had no position that could play through the middle, on the wings, um, inverted forward, all that stuff. Like, that was, the, for me, the best version of him. He scored everything. Goals outside the box, inside the box, headers, overhead kicks, long range, free kicks, whatever. He was absolutely phenomenal to watch. So dangerous, so aggressive, um, so driven. And then, obviously, you know, father time catches up with all of us and he can't do the things he used to do before. But to, for him to not even say once in that entire interview, yeah, I understand what the manager wants. Maybe I'm not the player I once was, but this, but that, but this is pretty crazy. It's pretty insane that he doesn't have any idea, any perception, any introspection on how badly, on how bad he's been playing lately or how ineffective he is in general and sometimes the reality of it is that even though we played horrible for the first half against Fulham as a team we're a lot more cohesive when he's not playing it's not it's not it's not like an offense to say that it's a fact your eyes don't lie to you he can still score goals for sure he's probably the best finisher at the club there's no doubt about it no one's kind of denying that but when it comes to playing football the guy is hopeless when it comes to playing with that team. It just doesn't work. There's probably too many missing pieces and stuff. It just doesn't make any sense. So the fact that he didn't admit any of that just goes to show that he is a consummate top tier narcissist, which obviously makes sense also because you can't be the best player in the world and be that self-absorbed and be showing your abs all the time and be doing all that stuff and not have a little bit of a delusion when it comes to how you're perceived and not see the errors of your ways at all. It doesn't really happen that way. So I can understand it. But again, if the Glazers leave because of this interview, I'm all for it. If they don't even leave for this interview, I'm all for it either because it still puts some egg on their faces and makes them somewhat embarrassed. And I love that because they, they don't hold themselves accountable enough and they basically, you know, inoc um, inoculate themselves from any criticism. They never talk to any of the flipping fans. Um, and it's just so horrible. So I can't wait until they leave. And if Ronaldo's the flipping catalyst for it, then so be it.